Yes, welcome back to the show and the discussion that the council tried to ban, the row that they didn't want. It's about Birmingham's Bullring Shopping Centre, but it speaks to every city and town in the country because the question we're really answering, asking rather, is who comes first? Is it the people or is it the developers and the businesses? Next Wednesday, the planning committee votes on whether to redevelop this enormous site. Now, this is a model of the bullring today. Over there, here, is St. Martin. Surrounded by market stalls that run through that area. Anybody who knows Birmingham will know exactly what we're talking about. Yes, they all say at the back there. But it's time, apparently, for the bullring to go. So, gentlemen, will you please now remove the bullring shopping centre? Out it goes, including, I might add, Birmingham's famous landmark, the Rotunda. We can get rid of that. You're not happy about that? You want to keep the rotunda? My goodness me. And in comes this. Now, this is a model of what we will see. There will be 200 shops. There will be two department stores. That ring road will go underground. This will be built in pleasant sandstone, red brick nice and pleasant things that we built in the style of the 1920s and the 1930s and this remarkable model over here will be Birmingham's new symbol it's 30 stories of solid office block well the question is ladies and gentlemen what do you make of it all Joe Holyoke where are I'm you here. I'm sorry there you are I'm confused with all of this what do you make of it well we, we think that the City Council is running a severe risk of repeating the mistakes of the 1960s when the Bullring Centre was built, um, of building a big inflexible shopping centre which is all shopping and not much else, um, which disadvantages the people who use the markets and the cheap shopping that's there in the Bullring at the moment, um, that has not a great deal of um, space for pedestrian routes. Uh, and is still dominated by the motor car, as the bullring is today. Well, Jeff Moyer, you're one of the architects responsible for this. What do you, why do you like it so much? Well, first of all, it's not disadvantaging the traditional shop of the bullring. We're not taking away the traditional shopping of the bullring. The best of it is the markets. We're keeping the markets. We're making them better. The good bits are the local shops that bring people in, make the bullring famous. We're keeping that. What we're getting rid of is this rubbish that they call architecture, this grey concrete mess. That's going. But the new buildings are coming, but the bullring, the character is staying. Now, what's upset people an awful lot, in particular the traders? Frank Ellis, you are a market trader. I am a market trader. The market and I trader challenge, I challenge Jeff Meyer to what he just said. You are not. You are keep saying to us, we are catering for the market trader. You know you're not. You know that there's going to be no market stalls in the building yeah. where it is today. You tell me, now you tell me, we've been to all your public consultation meetings where, oh, you can't speak, you're a market trader. You can speak because you're going to say, how nice the icing looks on the cake, and that's all it is, icing on your cake. Because when you get down to it, that's what it will look like. A, a load of rubbish, and I tell you what, is you've opened this up, this is the part you've opened up. Here, I like, there you are, we've given you a nice half a mile walk to your market, because that's where you are now. Before the war, pre-war, the markets was there, all the way down the road. Slowly but surely, they shove it out. When they want more of the city centre, they take it off you, the market trader. And not the market trader, the citizens of Birmingham. 57% of you people are market shoppers. Right. Those are the people they don't want to see. Right, Frank, I think you made your point, Jeff. How do you reply to that? I think Frank made his point. He's made it over and over and over again. He you is know, making his point. Yes, you know people we have are no, listening. Made all these people out here have as well. Now, right. Now, let, let the man answer, because there's a lot of you and there's only one of him. Go on. He's made well, a lot of noise. To see. He's made a lot of noise and nobody has shut him up. He's been there every night, every meeting, saying the same thing. He's been saying that we're doing away with the markets. We're not doing away with the markets. We're not doing away with the markets. You tell me, can, can you... Please? No, you keep saying to Your us, turn. when we questioned you at your public consultation meetings, it's all as you can keep saying is, we're providing the space. You're providing a load of market space with no market traders there because you're telling us that you can stick all the markets where now there are only two markets, on the road, the other side of Edge Baston Street. Right. That's Deny right. that. Jeff. The developer 
is going to hand over to the city a new building worth oh. 35 million. Take away from million. the city. Take finish. away the city from the city. No, 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 no. It's Frank. being sold to you people. Frank, you must let him finish at least a sentence. Thank Jeff. you. <laughs> Ready? The developer is handing over to the city a new building worth 35 million pounds that is for the markets. It's creating exactly the same space that they have at the moment, and there's an absolute legal commitment Who's for the developer. Who's paying for it? The developer. Go away. The developer. That's what we're not for told it. by the well, city, then. Frank, there are other market traders I know in our audience. Well, ask them. Some, I'm going ask to. Them. I'm going to. Hang on. Ask them. Yeah, go on. For three years, we, as a market traders, under the banner of the preservation of the Bullring Committee, have negotiated with the developers LET. From day one, we professionally put forward plans, not in opposition to a development, but in opposition to what they wanted to do. And we put a plan forward that would make the city look wonderful, the city centre. Let me say something that which perhaps Jeff isn't able to say, and I should take my life in my hands and say this. I was down there today. And it's very shabby down there. It no. needs a new place. No, no, well, it needs like, a cut it off. I've got to pull well, you up. It's a city to put it I've got to pull you up. Well, let let him answer it. Let him answer it. A market, a street market is what the ball ring is. A street market. It's no fancy. <laughs> developers put there before the bloody yeah. buildings. Andy Foster, are you going to be voting in favour of this? You can see there's a lot of heat, a lot of people upset. Well, I'm very sceptical about it. But the problem for the councillors is that if we don't vote in favour of it, if we refuse it, the developer can appeal to the minister. Frank has no such right. None of the objectors have that right. If we approve it, there's no right of Who appeal. Put the but in? if we if we refuse it, the developer can go straight to the minister. And very often, there's a huge, great building going up in Colmore Row at the moment on just that basis. The minister allows the appeal. The government is committed to free enterprise. It believes in developers' rights. It said we've got to approve applications. We're in a position where I would love to refuse it, and I think I would be very, you know, that's the way my mind is going. But I know a lot of my colleagues, for honest reasons, will try and think, let's get into a negotiating position. Let's see if we can Look, pull something listen, back. I'm going to walk through all of this. There's lots and lots of hands up over here. Go on, Given speak. that the council owns much of the land, surely they can prevent the development if they wish to by just retaining hold of the land. Right, that's the point. Yes, go on. Do you shop in the markets? Uh, I, I used to. I have done to the moment because uh, I work out in Sully Oak. But every time I've been around the whole of the country and I say I'm from Birmingham, the first thing they say is a ball ring and the first thing they recognise is the rotunda. Do you want to keep it? Yeah, yes, yeah, it should. It's part of now part of yeah, the yeah, Birmingham yeah. skyline. <laughs> You don't want you don't want any redevelopment at all. No, well, it's just it was destroyed when the ball ring was built in the first place. But now it's been destroyed. Let's just leave it as it is, <coughs> sir. To me, I like to see the ball ring. I go down several days a week. I meet all the old age people down there. I'm an old age pensioner myself. They get the price of the food as cheap as the suits the pockets. And these fellas, I and the ladies, they go and get stores. They're great to the old age people. Right. And the old age people are there every day. S sir. That's yeah. their life. What Andy Foster says about the uh, concern about taking it to the Department of the Environment? Because I'm sure that if, if it does go back to the Department of the Environment, they will possibly refuse it as well. It's a kind of blackmail. If, you know, we should be able to decide our own local matters ourselves. I'm fed up with this sort of central government decision. Ian we ought to stand up for our own environment. Now, you have been part of a, of a new scheme, haven't you? You've looked at a different way of redeveloping the Bullring area. What, what, what sort of plans would you put forward, or have you put forward? Well, well I, I work for an organisation we called Birmingham for People, and um, for Thanks. two years we've been campaigning on the Bullring issue, and we've supported the market traders and what they've asked for, and we put, put, put forward alternative plans for the Bullring, which included public open space, included a fantastic new setting for the markets and for the church, included new elements like housing, which LET haven't included, against all the recommendations of the City Council and everybody else who knows anything about how to plan a city. We wanted leisure facilities, everything you need to make a city vibrant. And are what are LET going to do?